Hey guys, KR50 here with another review. This time I'll be reviewing the SH Figure Arts Blood Stark from Kamen Rider Build. This is a highly detailed and articulated figure of the villainous Blood Stark who started out as Night Rogue's partner, but later split off and uh, furthered his own plans. The set includes the figure itself, two accessories, and three alternate pairs of hands. So, let's get started. So here we have Blood Stark, and for those wondering why I'm calling him Blood Stark instead of Blood Stark and might not have seen my previous videos, that's because the way his name is spelled and said in Japanese more lines up with the name Stark rather than Stock, which has a completely different pronunciation. So it's really a case of Blood Stark being what he should be called. Anyway, getting to the figure. Whereas Night Rogue was mainly black and dark gray, Blood Stark is mainly red and maroon. Starting off with a look at his head, we can see that similar to Rogue, he's got a mask covering his face, in this case in the shape of a cobra. You can see the head here, as well as the hood, where you can also see a couple of nice little eyes molded in behind it. Then you've got the tail, which goes down and then sticks out on side as a horn, which is a pretty nice design. He also has another smokestack horn up here. Getting down to the chest, you've got a nice cover design there, as well as a lot of nice gunmetal gray armor. He's got tubes coiling around him, similar like to a snake or boa, or like a feather boa. He's got these shoulder pads with stingers coming out of them. Stingers as the tips, right there. Got a lot of tubes running through them. Done up with blue and white. Getting down to the forearms, he has stingers on there as well. And these are things he can extend out and use in the series, though there aren't any accessories to replicate that. We've got the simple design at the waist, with the rather nondescript belt. All the nice cogs and kind of bolts on the back. And then the pretty simple design for the lower body, legs, and feet. Now, being part of the Transteam system, Bloodstark shares a lot of similarities to Night Rogue, so we can compare them side by side. First thing to note is that the two actually use the same base helmet just with different mask and different horns. You can see each of them also has have these vents on the side that make the helmets kind of look like gas masks. They have different chest armor. The way the pipes are laid out is quite a bit different. Different added pieces on the arms and forearms. You can see that the pieces on the upper arms are actually the same except for Rogue having these blades sticking out of them. Have the same positions for the tubing, just in different colors. And then the lower bodies are identical. So articulation-wise, he's basically got all of the same articulation as Rogue as well. Ball joint head, with a neck that's also on a similar ball joint. Full rotation of the shoulders, which you can go in and out, and the shoulder pads are on these hinges, so you move outwards like so. Has a bicep swivel, a double joint elbow that functions a bit more like a single joint because of the bulk of the arms. Ball jointed swivel at the wrists. Or rather, a ball joint wrist that acts more like a swivel when you have these hands on it. Although, um, 
actually in typical SSPR style it has a for gun it's really a rotation and swivel have the nice ab crunch as well as a waist joint legs go forward and back in and out and do have an extending stock got a thigh swivel double jointed knees that go back that far ball joint ankles with an ankle pivot and tilt and then the always strange toe joint now another similarity to Rogue, Stark here comes with basically all these same accessories as him. So starting off we have the Trans Steam Gun, which is of course very well sculpted and painted, including a little molded in and removable Cobra Full Ball, as done in this clear purple plastic. Though unlike last time, I'm not going to be removing this as this is a very tiny piece that is easy to lose. And along with that is the steam blade. Again, with all the same molding and paint, and you can still move the hinge here and rotate the dial, or rather the valve. And like before, you can still split it apart and combine it with the trans steam gun to create rifle mode. Similarly, he also has the same three alternate pairs of hands. We have the open, kind of, kind of sprawled out hands with the cur these uh, gnarly curled fingers. The more common relaxed hands. And then the two gripping hands, which again have the same thing going where you always have the first finger here sticking out. Which again is the kind of thing where I wish that there were two pairs of gripping hands, one with the finger extended, one with it inward. And of course for that you just slide the weapon into the grip. just like that. And the last thing I'm going to be looking at are these two pieces which are the Tamashi Effect Steam. Now I don't really remember the details of this but I believe this is part of a campaign wherein if you pre-ordered either the first wave or uh, one of the early waves of this figure this would be included with the figure in the box. And so these are two pieces consider consistent of a stand an extension piece and then the actual effect where well, these can be used alongside your common iron build figures. Now the default formation here is intended for the SHF build rabbit tank form as when he transforms in the show he gives off an effect of having steam coming out of his body. Those are also meant to be used in conjunction or advertised as being able to be used in conjunction with Stark and Rogue. For Blood Stark, it's shown that it kind of let you put the pieces like this to show steam coming out of the tubes down here. Or with Rogue, it advertises you being able to put the pieces by the shoulder to show the steam coming out of the shoulder pieces or the tubes on here. Though, in truth, that is not quite as accurate as for Night Rogue and Bloodstark. After they transform, they actually have fireworks coming out of the tubes on their bodies. Though, in order to use them like that, you need to use the plugs in the back sides here and have a couple of Tamashi Act 4 stages, something I do not have nor intend to buy. This is definitely not something that is a must-have in terms of getting this set. It's just a nice little bonus if you want something to post some of your figures with. And there we go. 
Overall, Blood Stark is an excellent figure, equal in quality to Night Rogue, which makes sense since they're built from the same body. They have the same level of detail and articulation, and they do share the same, basically the same accessories, but that's just a product of how similar they are in general. Still, it's a shame that Night Rogue was a retail release, whereas Bloodstark is a premium bond exclusive, which I actually find a little bit ironic, because while early on in the series, Rogue was the more important villain, and the more prominent one, as the series went on, not only did Stark stay in his suit for longer, but he ended up proving to be the more pivotal and important villain to the series as a whole. So it is funny that this is the guy who ended up being premium Bandai exclusive, whereas Rogue was the one who was a standard retail release. Still, they do sell for a similar price point, and you can find this guy for a good price, taking into account middleman and shipping fees, or just shipping fees if you can find him on, say, an auction site or something like that. Then I would recommend picking this guy up if you're a fan of the character. Next time, I'll be reviewing the SHV Arts Common Art Cross, Tuesday at 6pm PST. So, thanks for watching, if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, let me know your thoughts down in the comments, and if you're new and would like to see more, please subscribe and hit the bell icon. And for now, this is KRX50, riding off.